Unit 4 we will familiarize ourselves with falsification. This unit is divided into three sections. Section 1. Falsification and falsifiability. Falsification can be defined as the act of disproving a hypothesis, proposition or theory. In a previous chapter it was pointed out that a distinction can be made between universal propositions and existential propositions. In the context of falsification this differentiation becomes important. Universal propositions are falsifiable. An example for universal propositions is All swans are white. This sentence is falsifiable. Either because of the fact that someone discovers a black swan or because of the possibility that someone might identify a swan with a color that is not white. Existential propositions are not falsifiable. An example of an existential proposition is Black swans exist. This sentence is not falsifiable, either because of the proof that black swans exist or because of the possibility that someone might prove the existence of black swans. The problem of non-falsifiability might become clearer if you change the sentence to Blue swans exist. Nobody knows whether blue swans exist or not. There is always a possibility that someone discovers a blue swan. Verification can be defined as the act of proving a hypothesis, proposition or theory. Universal propositions are not verifiable. Again, our example of a universal proposition is All swans are white. This sentence is not verifiable, either because we already know that swans with other colors exist or because of the possibility that someone might discover swans with a color that is not white. Existential propositions are verifiable. Again, our example of an existential proposition is black swans exist. This sentence is verifiable either because of the proof that black swans exist or because of the possibility that someone might prove the existence of black swans. We already know that falsification is the act of disproving a hypothesis, proposition, statement, sentence or theory. In an academic or scientific context, the attribute or characteristic of falsifiability becomes important. Falsifiability is the act that a hypothesis, proposition, statement, sentence or theory has to be formulated in a way that it is disputable, meaning that it is falsifiable. In the following, some examples of non-falsifiable statements will be given in order to illustrate the problem. The sentence, the sun will shine tomorrow or not, is non-falsifiable because it is tautological. The statement is always true. The sentence, actions will have consequences, is non-falsifiable because it is meaningless. The statement lacks precision. The sentence, the German Renewable Energy Act has or could have a strong impact on the financial feasibility is non-falsifiable because it is meaningless. The statement lacks precision due to the imprecise adjective strong. Section 2. Falsification of a hypothesis with modus tollens. We already know the logical figure of modus tollens from a previous unit. In the following we will use modus tollens in order to explain the logical structure of falsification. Let us suppose that the hypothesis is as follows. All swans are white. An empirical observation might lead to the following statement. A swan is black. 
This leads to the conclusion that the initial hypothesis, all swans are white, is not true. Thereby, the initial hypothesis has been falsified. In an even more formalized way, we can say, if A, then B. B holds not true, therefore not H. Or written in mathematical terms, if A, then B, B holds not true, therefore not H. Section 3. Indicator and causal hypotheses. In business and social sciences, it is common to generate statistical hypotheses. This takes place by way of induction. Observations will be extended in order to generate an indicator hypothesis. From all observed swans are white, we could derive a projecting indicator hypothesis the next observed swan will be white. Or a generalizing indicator hypothesis, all swans are white. We know by now that this type of reasoning is problematic, which becomes evident while using the white swan, black swan example. Let us have a look at another example. The example is credit risk and the equity ratio. From we observe no defaults for borrowers with equity ratios above 50%, we could derive a projecting indicator hypothesis. The borrowers with an equity ratio above 50% will not default on their obligations. Or a generalizing indicator hypothesis, borrowers with equity ratios above 50% imply a default probability of 0%. Again, this type of reasoning might be problematic. If inductive reasoning by way of an indicator hypothesis is problematic, the question is whether we can apply deductive reasoning as an alternative. Let us use the previous example, credit risk and the equity ratio. While applying deductive logic, we might come up with the following line of thought. Losses might lead to insolvency, or, in other words, credit risk. Equity is a buffer that absorbs losses. Therefore, we derive the causal hypothesis, equity has a positive impact on credit risk. From equity has a positive impact on credit risk, we could derive the forecast the higher the equity ratio, the lower the credit risk will be. Or the generalization, a higher equity ratio implies a lower credit risk. Again, this type of reasoning might be problematic. Let us compare induction and deduction. Inductive reasoning uses empirical statistical methods. The statement, we observed no defaults, meaning no credit risk for borrowers with equity ratios above 50%, is an indicator hypothesis that is based on a statistical explanation of credit risk drivers. The downside is that it does not necessarily provide a logical explanation. Deductive reasoning applies logical deductive methods. The statement equity has a positive impact on credit risk because it serves as buffer against losses is a causal hypothesis that is based on a logical explanation of credit risk drivers. The downside is that it is not necessarily based on a statistical proof. Both induction as well as deduction have their shortcomings. This is why typically both methods are combined in the world of sciences. Often an observation is the starting point for deriving an indicator hypothesis. An indicator hypothesis might initiate a theory. Typically a theory delivers a causal hypothesis that can be used in order to derive a conclusion. Observations might be used in order to support or falsify a theory. Conclusions might affirm or falsify a theory.